Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Zed Stealth here, and in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the new strong and weak picks for patch 9.7. So to start off here, it looks like Silas is no longer going to be an S tier pick in the mid lane for 9.7. He's getting some pretty decent nerfs here for 9.7, so I think these could potentially drop him all the way down into B tier for next patch. So he's getting a base HP regen decrease, his Q damage and W damage are both being lowered, and then his E's cooldown is being increased by 6 seconds at rank 1, and considering you don't max this ability out until last on Silas, it's actually a very big hit as well. So so just with all of these changes combined here, I no longer think Silas is going to be an S tier pick, obviously for next patch. Will it drop him all the way down into B tier? I do think so. He might still remain like a decent A tier pick, but I just don't think he's going to stay a very good pick for solo queue with these changes. So the second pretty big change for next patch is to Mundo. So he's getting two different changes here. He's getting a Q damage increase. So it's getting increased, it looks like, by 5% of the target's uh, current HP at all ranks. And then his E minimum bonus damage, the AD on that, it is being increased by, it looks like, 10 at all ranks. So really nice buff there to Mundo. I do think that he could potentially even jump up into S tier for 9.7 with these changes because they're both pretty solid buffs. But I do think at the very least, he's going to jump out of B tier and into A tier for 9.7. And then for Cho'Gath for next patch, Q cooldown is being lowered from 9 seconds down to 7 seconds, so just overall a straight up buff here to both Tank Cho'Gath and AP Cho'Gath for next patch. I do think that this change alone would not have been enough to bump him up into A tier, but the change we'll take a look in a second here, the two changes we'll take a look in a second, I do think are going to push him into A tier for 9.7. And then those indirect changes I was talking about that would be the tipping point for like Cho'Gath and would help out Mundo as well for next patch are to overgrowth and demolish so overgrowth it is getting a buff to where the max health after absorbing 120 monsters or minions is being increased from 2.5% up to 3.5%, so it is a nice buff here to tank champions. Demolish as well, getting a buff to where percent of max health as bonus damage is being increased from 30% up to 35%, so not a big change, but it is still a tiny buff to these tank champions who do, who do run Resolve Primary. And then for Garen for next patch, now I do have on screen here that he's going to stay an A tier pick for 9.7, but I didn't really factor in the demolish changes and the overgrowth changes when I was uh, doing the overlays for this video, so I do think that Garen could actually potentially be an S minus champion for 9.7 because these changes here to his W along with those like overgrowth and demolish changes are really good for Garen, so his W is just getting straight up buff for next patch, you're going to be getting more armor and magic resist per stack on your W. Also at max stacks, it's going to be 40 up to 50 for next patch. And then the cooldown on your, on your W is also being lowered. Once you do get it maxed out, it's being lowered by five seconds. So overall, just a really nice buff here to Garen for 9.7. And like I said, I do think he could potentially be an S minus champion for 9.7. For Rumble for next patch, some really nice buffs here. He's getting a W bonus movement speed increase by 10% at all ranks, and then his ultimate's cooldown is being lowered by 10 at rank 1, and then 15 at rank 2 is being lowered by 20 at rank 3, so this is overall a really good change for Rumble because the fact his ultimate is being decreased there by 15 seconds at rank 2 is just really going to help out his mid game, and that's where Rumble does thrive. He's got one of the strongest mid games for any top lane champion, so I think that Rumble is going to jump up into an A tier top lane pick here for 9.7. And then for Kale for this patch, she's getting a bunch of different changes here, but even though she's getting a lot of changes, I still don't think they're going to be enough to really drop her out of S tier, and if they do drop her out of S tier, she's still going to be a solid A tier pick for 9.7, so her armor per level is being lowered, Q mana cost is being increased by 10 at all ranks, her W is getting some nerfs as well to where the move speed is being lowered, uh, the mana cost on her W is being increased at later ranks, but it's actually decreased at earlier ranks, and then her E, this is probably the bigger change here. Her E damage is going to be lowered by 4% there once you do get it maxed out, but it is now going to have an AP scaling on it, so it's going to have 1% extra damage per 100 ability power. So I just think overall, they are nurse to Kale, obviously, but I don't think they're going to be enough to drop her out of S tier. I do think that if you're running into mana problems a little bit more in this patch because of the Q change, then going for the Trini Force build, going for the crit build would even be more enticing for 9. 
1.7. I don't really think that the changes there uh, to her W really mattered too much because her W isn't really what's making her strong. So I just think overall, expect Kale to still be a great pick for this patch. And then for Lissandra for next patch, her Q cooldown is being increased by four seconds at rank one there. And then once you do max it out, it's only gonna be increased by one second. So I do think this is definitely gonna hurt Lissandra's early game. Her first couple of levels are gonna be a lot weaker uh, here for 9.7, and she's gonna be just a lot more punishable in the laning phase. So I don't even think Lissandra really needed this nerf. I don't really think she's super OP like she was a while back, but I do think this nerf is gonna drop her down into B tier for 9.7. And then for Urgot for 9.7, not too much of a surprise, he is getting nerfed. They really did overshoot with the buffs in 9.6, so he is getting some compensation nerfs for this patch. E cooldown is being increased by two seconds at rank one. It's gonna be the same though once you max it out. E mana cost is being increased there by 10 at all ranks, and then his ultimate's damage is also being lowered by 25 at all ranks. So some decent nerfs to Urgot here, and I do think that if he wasn't such a god tier champion right now in 9.6, then these nerfs would probably be enough to drop him down into A tier, but I still think that Urgot is going to remain an S tier champion for 9.7. So for Pike, we have two different buffs for 9.7. Q cooldown is being lowered by two seconds in the earlier ranks. It's going to be the same once you max it out though. E stun duration is being increased there by it looks like 0.15 seconds. So they are buffs to Pike, but are they really going to do anything? I don't really think so. I think Pike's just going to remain an A tier support pick for 9.7. So similar to Pike, Morgana is getting some pretty negligible changes for 9.7. HP regen per level is being lowered, and then her WAP ratio is being lowered from 16% down to 14%. So kind of like Pike, yes, they're nerfs, but they're not really going to do anything. And I think Morgana is just going to stay an S tier pick for 9.7. Now the Leona change here is pretty interesting for 9.7 because her E cooldown, it is being lowered from 9 seconds down to 6 seconds once you get it maxed out, and 6 seconds is the cooldown of your Q at all ranks, so this is actually a pretty big change here because it now means once you max out your E, once you hit the mid game there, your E is going to be on the exact same cooldown as your Q, so whenever you're looking to try to go for an engage with your E, your Q is always going to be up, so this is a really nice change here to Leona. It's definitely going to increase her mid game team fight potential so I think that this should be enough to bump Leona up into A tier for 9.7. Keep in mind that the overgrowth and demolish changes would also influence Leona for next patch and would influence a few tank supports as well. So if you take that into consideration as well, I do think that even solidifies Leona even more as being an A tier pick for 9.7. And then the final change to champions for next patch is to Azir. So Azir is getting HP regen per level. It is being increased and his Q's damage is also being increased by 10 at all ranks. So kind of negligible changes in my opinion. I think that Azir is a decent pick right now in solo queue. I don't think he's in the worst spot he's ever been. I also don't think he's in the strongest spot he's ever been, obviously, but I think that overall, he's not going to jump up for next patch and he's going to stay a B tier pick for 9.7. And then if we jump into some item changes along with some more rune changes for 9.7, Wit's End is getting some very interesting changes for next patch. So cost on the item is being increased by 500 gold. However, the attack speed and the magic resist are both being increased by 10. It's now also going to have 5% movement speed on there. And the passive, it's still going to deal bonus magic damage on hit. However, it's also now going to heal you for that magic damage dealt. So what this means for next patch is that I do think this is going to be a great item now against AP tanks or against heavy enemy AP compositions. If you're playing a champion like Aurelia or Udyr, Kindred, Jax, these champions that do benefit a lot from attack speed and also from having the magic damage on hit, I just think the fact that if you're playing up against someone like a Maokai or a Cho'Gath in the top lane and you pick up this item, you're going to get the magic resist, which means they're going to deal pretty much no damage against you. You're also also going to deal magic damage so they're going to be trying to build armor against you and you're going to have some magic damage there uh, to negate that and to just deal some more damage for yourself and the fact you're also now going to heal from that magic damage is going to be really good because these champions like the Maokai and the Cho'Gath they kind of they don't really have a lot of burst damage in their kit they're more consistent damage they're going to try to whittle you down so if you're just getting that constant healing out of the wits end it's going to be very very hard for those tank champions to kill you 
you in the side lane. So I do expect this to be picked up more for next patch in niche situations. Obviously, I don't think it's going to be core on any champion, but if you're playing someone like Aurelia or Jax or Kindred, Trindamir, and you're going up against like a heavy AP composition or up against an AP tank in the top lane and you're looking to side lane, then I think this item is going to be a great option now for 9.7. Now Dark Seal is getting a nerf for next patch, the AP on the item is being lowered by 5 so it is a pretty decent nerf here for next patch, however I don't really think it's going to prevent people from picking up the Dark Seal. I feel like the main reason to why people uh, pick up Dark Seal right now is because of the insane sustain that it does give. People going like double Dark Seal and just getting like plus 50% bonus uh, healing from your Corrupting Potion just makes it a very very strong item to pick up in the early game and even though it is getting nerfed here, it is obviously, obviously going to hurt those champions that are going for uh, the double Dark Seal and the Corrupting Dark Seal uh, combination but I don't think it's going to be going to be enough to stop people from going for that. And then for Cinderhulk for 9.7, just a straight up buff here to pretty much every tank jungler for 9.7, so the damage it does to monsters is being increased from 200% up to 300% for this patch. And then for Cutdown is getting another buff in this patch, I'm pretty sure it was buffed either last patch or the patch before, but the damage from it is being increased again here, it's going from 5 to 12% up to 5 to 15%, so I do think that AD carry should now actually consider taking this for 9.7. I know that Coup de Gras is basically the default option in that row for all AD carries right now, but if you are up against a very tanky enemy team comp, then Cutdown should be something you should be taking for 9.7. Now Eyeball Collector is getting a bunch of different changes for 9.7, however the biggest change here is the fact that you can no longer get stacks from ward takedowns or assists. I think this is just going to make the rune pretty inconsistent now for 9.7 because if you're not able to pick up kills throughout the early game then you're just not going to be able to stack this item so unless you're playing in a very confident matchup and you're playing like an assassin pick that can snowball the early game, I just don't think it's going to be worth it to run this rune for 9.7 more, especially with the changes that are coming to Ghost Poro and to Zombie Ward that we're going to take a look at here in a second. But basically, you now need 10 kills also in order for you to get the extra bonus adaptive stats from Eyeball Collector. So the chance of you getting 10 kills like every game is pretty low, and I just don't think it's going to be a very consistent rune anymore for 9.7. Now, Ghost Poro here though is getting some pretty good changes. So you're no longer going to like plant the Poro and then you're going to get bonus stats it's now going to work to where when your wards do expire they're now going to drop a ghost poro for 60 seconds so you're going to gain 1.2 ad or 2 ap for every poro spawned up to 10 and then once you do spawn 10 poros you're going to gain 10 adaptive damage so i just think this is going to be way more consistent than the eyeball collector for next patch because you are going to be consistently placing wards throughout the early game there you are going to eventually be able to get to your 10 stacks and get the bonus adaptive of damage so I just think that with those eyeball collector changes and with these changes here to ghost poro the fact that poro is also going to be easier to use now for next patch you don't actually have to like place it down to get bonus stats and think about where you're placing it all you got to do is drop wards to get the bonus effects I do think it's going to make it even more consistent for 9.7. And then for Zombie Ward for next patch, it's no longer going to deal damage after you kill a ward. However, you're now going to actually gain adaptive damage for every Zombie Ward spawned up to 10, so 1.2 AD or 2 AP. And then once you do spawn 10 Zombie Wards, you're going to gain an extra 10 adaptive force. So I just think this is going to be taken way more than Eyeball Collector now for next patch on support champions that do run Domination Primary. And I think that this is likely going to be the one that most junglers do now take for 9.7. And then for Ultimate Hunter for next patch, the CDR per stack is being increased from 2% up to 3%, so I think that overall for most champions, they're still going to either want to go Ravenous Hunter or Relentless Hunter, but champions who are very ultimate reliant, say someone like a Kennen or a Rumble, I do think they will swap over to this rune now for 9.7, so for certain champions, I do think this is a pretty nice buff, but I do think overall most champions will still remain uh, taking Ravenous Hunter or Relentless 
Relentless Hunter for next patch. So that is going to be all for this video guys. I do think that for this next patch the meta should definitely shift a little bit here. I do think some tanks might come back now in the top lane. Those wits end changes are definitely very interesting there and then I do think that Silas should no longer be a super good pick in the mid lane now for this patch. So with that being said though guys if you did enjoy this video then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you've yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I will see you in my next video.